and welcome everyone to our APC Fellowship Program, our demo day for electric vehicle maintenance training. We are very excited because we are streaming live from Los Angeles Trade Tech College in partnership with the Transportation Workforce Institute. And we are here with family and friends and we are delighted for those of you who are joining us via Zoom to come and witness this auspicious occasion to celebrate 13 EV maintenance techs that are completing Lacey's APC Fellowship Program Technical Bootcamp. So you are in store for a treat today. We certainly hope that you delight yourself in all of the presentations that we have in store. We are really excited that we've had a great five week accelerated training that you'll learn more about throughout the program. As you can see our agenda today, um, we have a great lineup. Um, I'm doing the welcome. Um, in a minute, we'll hear from our president and CEO, Lacey uh, Matt Peterson, and then we'll have a program overview by Estelle Madrid. Then we'll have EV maintenance course overview. We'll have um, fellowship testimonials, group presentations, funder remarks, and then we'll finally present certificates and remarks um, from our APC fellowship workforce development team. And so with no further ado, I would like to welcome to the virtual stage, our president and CEO, Matt Peterson. All right, Ferg, it's so exciting that you're in the real world. It's so amazing, I'm, I'm getting really close to my, because uh, you look so small, it's pretty exciting to see everybody there in the, in the maintenance bay. What an exciting day, both for uh, us as human beings, as well as uh, for us as an organization and all of our fellows who are participating in this groundbreaking program in partnership uh, with the LA Trade Tech and the LA Clean Tech Incubator coming together to really uh, put forth not just this great program, but a vision of how we're going to take this region and state and our country and world for that matter of of really leading by making sure we can get more electric vehicles on the road and making them more accessible for everyone. And doing that, we need to make sure we have the workforce ready to ensure these vehicles stay on the road, are maintained properly, perform optimally, uh, and bring all the benefits, uh, which are cleaner air first and foremost, lower operating costs for those that drive the vehicles, uh, job creation as we're doing right now and preparing you for the workforce of the future to be the workforce of the future today instead of tomorrow uh, bringing those jobs and these opportunities to the here and now um, and this is just uh, you know from a from a germ or nugget of an idea uh, to the dream becoming true this is what this this cohort represents and all of the work that you're doing and the demos that you're going to put forth in the next a couple hours here is just so exciting. So I'm inspired by you. Uh, I said this to some of you on Friday that participated in our colloquial uh, conversation. You um, you and your, your commitment uh, get me up in the morning, um, having been uh, at the helm of organizations and in the mayor's office of leading efforts on climate in different ways. You know, the getting people's attention and showing how this can benefit everybody, whether it's making affordable housing healthier, getting more electric vehicles in the hands of low income community members uh, to benefit from these transformations. It's been something I've worked on a long time and, and, and you inspire me uh, and you're making the future possible through what you're doing right here today. So um, just uh, a heart full of gratitude. Um, and excitement to see what you're doing and, and what you're gonna be doing in, in, in the future. So I just wanna thank you on behalf of Lacey and our work to create an inclusive green economy, uh, the work that the team uh, Ferg and Sharon and Estelle are doing uh, and all the Lacey staff uh, to work with you. Um, thank you uh, and let's get on with the rest of demo day. We really appreciate your leadership and opening up the door of opportunity for us and the APC fellows that are sitting here uh, that's joining us today. Um, now I wanna bring up our SVP of Enhancing Community, Estelle Madrid, that will give you um, an overview of the APC Fellowship Program and our progress to date. Estelle, welcome to the virtual stage. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ferg. And thank you so much, Matt, for your beautiful opening remarks and for making all of this work possible. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so first off, just wanted to give special thanks to all of our APC Fellowship Program funders for your investment in our stellar EV maintenance cohort. Um, so we've got California Go Biz, uh, Electrify America, welcome to Misty Murphy and Misty Jappa, uh, Union Bank, JP Morgan Chase, uh, Southern California Edison. And I also wanted to give special recognition to Sue Chi from the Broad Foundation for their overall support of Lacey and green economic recovery. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, before we dive into demo day, I just wanted to share a little bit of background about our APC fellowship program, uh, particularly for all of our guests who are learning about this program for the first time. Um, as part of our work uh, in Lacey's Enhancing Community, uh, in 2019, we launched our flagship workforce development program, our APC Fellowship, under the leadership of our incredible workforce development team, Ferg and Sharon, and in partnership with our APC team, Nick and Lawrence. We had three goals. Uh, number one, we wanted to leverage the potential of our APC or Advanced Prototyping Center on campus as a community resource through workforce development programming. Number two, we also wanted to provide our APC fellows with technical training, interpersonal skills, and industry recognized certifications to realize their own uh, potential in the, in the green economy. And finally, we wanted to provide our Lacey startups and partners with a trained talent pipeline with our fellows joining either as interns or through a direct job placement. Here is a snapshot of our growth uh, and impact over the years. Um, we have graduated 124 fellows to date, including this cohort. 100% um, of our fellows have earned an industry recognized credential. And some of you in this cohort have earned even up to four. Um, and 74% have been placed in gainful employment or are pursuing post-secondary education. Next slide, please. Uh, so since we launched our APC fellowship program, we've been strategic about the themes we've selected. Um, as we think about the potential and growth of the green workforce, we wanted to ensure that our trainings are aligned with job opportunities in the burgeoning clean tech economy. So just to give you a high level overview, um, when we first started the program, um, our, our cohort theme was focused on prototyping, design and manufacturing. Uh, cohorts two and three were focused on EV network technician training. So essentially servicing EV chargers when they go down. Um, our cohort four was focused on software development and IT support as it relates to electric mobility. And then finally, here we are with cohort five on EV, EV maintenance technical training. Next slide, please. So big shout out to our graduating cohort five today. We put together a little collage of photos that were taken throughout your technical boot camp. Um, congrats on completing. We are so grateful for all of your hard work and everything that you did um, to ma maximize these past five weeks um, in your learning experience at LATTC, both through your in classroom learning, as well as your hands on training in the lab. And um, as Fergus mentioned, we're super excited to see your final projects. Um, also, special thanks to the extraordinary team at LATTC Jess, Marcy, Erica, and of course, our fabulous instructor, Mr. Semadini, for making our technical boot camp possible. Next slide, please. Uh, we are excited to share that there are countless opportunities ahead for each of you um, as technical bootcamp completers. I wanted to share how today's theme of accelerating the zero emissions transportation workforce is aligned with policy and research. Um, so first, as cited in Lacey's Green Jobs Report, Governor Newsom's 2035 executive order will require a higher demand for light, medium, and heavy-duty vehicle maintenance. Um, research has also highlighted that 75% of green jobs are accessible without a bachelor's degree, so lots of opportunity there. 
Um, we also wanted to share that Lacey has sponsored uh, Senate Bill 551, um, a bill that would create the California Electric Vehicle Authority, or SEVA. SEVA uh, would create high quality jobs and make California a world leader in EV deployment, design, development, manufacturing, supply chain, and infrastructure. And finally, uh, Lacey's Transportation Electrification Partnership has put forth our 2028 Zero Emissions Roadmap 2.0 in advance of the Olympic and Paralympic Games coming to Los Angeles. Uh, the Zero Emissions Roadmap would accelerate the adoption of light duty passenger electric vehicles to be 30% of all vehicles on the road and at least 80% of all vehicles sold by 2028. So as you can see, there are a wealth of opportunities to come for each of you as you complete our technical boot camp. Thank you all for helping Lacey to accelerate uh, the zero emissions transportation workforce and for all of your future contributions to the green economy. And with that, I will hand it over to Jess Guerra, Executive Director of the Transportation Workforce Institute at LATTC to share more about their incredible program. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I, I just, I would be remiss if, if we just don't give our, our graduates one more round of applause, please. Congratulations to all of you. You know, I wanna share something. Uh, this past year has been a challenging one for us. Uh, we had to, in March of 2020, move to a 100% online remote learning environment. And while we did bring some of our courses back in the spring of 2021, summer of 2021 is the very first time that we have brought our courses back for full face-to-face -face lecture and hands-on instruction. This group that is sitting right here behind us, all of these uh, completers, these, these graduates today, they were able to come in, uh, readjust to this new normal of, uh, uh, social distancing, wearing uh, the PPE, and learning in what may be around for a very long time, and at least uh, certainly uh, be remembered by, by all of us as the very first cohort that came through, completed, and with no incidents. And we're really, really proud of that. You know, one of the things that I want to mention is that when we started talking about uh, launching this program, uh, we wanted not to just give participants uh, training in EV maintenance, but we wanted the course to mean something to them. We wanted them to be able to uh, get uh, earn college units. Uh, we wanted to be able to build in uh, here at LATTC. We often uh, compare our programs to this big, you know, highway with multiple on ramps and off ramps where people can come right back and continue their education and get off uh, at the next stage of their career and continue and hop back on. For uh, all of our participants, they have actually earned college units uh, that are accredited units towards a certificate of achievement in hybrid and electric vehicle technology. So some of them are going to continue on and they're only two courses away from earning a certificate. Not only are they uh, from earning a college certificate, but they can also earn a, an associates in science degree if they continue with this. And this is on top of all of the industry recognized certifications that we just talked about um, that, that were highlighted that many of our, of our participants not only earn one or two, some have three or even more. So they're great opportunities ahead. I think it's been a, a, a great uh, partnership for us, uh, partnering with Lacey, uh, Ferg, the entire team over there at, at Lacey. And then of course, um, I think the families of these graduates deserve a lot of credit. Those that are sitting out in the audience today because uh, childcare, uh, being able to adjust uh, in, in this environment, it's not an easy thing. So it's something that they should be very proud of. We are proud of them here at LA Trade Tech. And uh, we consider them not only our students, but our alum, and hope to see him a lot more of them in the years to come. I want to thank Estelle for the overview, and thank you, Jess, for sharing more about the program and all of the wonderful things that our participants, our fellows, have gained throughout this program. Um, and this is just the beginning. This is the tip of the iceberg to many more opportunities. 
And so now we want to set this time aside for you all to hear from a few of our participants. They all will share testimonials and what they thought about the program, a little bit about their story and what are the next steps for them um, as it relates to EV maintenance and this green economy. So first I'd like to bring uh, to the stage Maurice Gaither. Maurice Gaither will give an overview or testimonial and then we'll have Kenneth Gonzalez and Michael Washington. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maurice Gaither. First and foremost, I would like to thank Lacey, LATT Tech, for introducing me to a life-changing <clears throat> opportunity that I've never dreamt of. I've always been in love with nature, so helping the world is essential for our survival and comes second nature to my heart and soul. I grew up not too far from Trade Tech, just off the 110 Harbor Freeway in Gage Avenue. Me and my little brother used to play all over the USC campus as adventurous, extra curious kids. Around that age, my parents got heavily involved in drugs, which led to my grandmother raising us. I got involved in the gang life at 11 years old, never really had a chance since then. In 1993, I was shot three different times in three different months of that year. So since then, I've been incarcerated a few times over the past couple of decades, which just recently I got released in March. I'm currently staying in a men's transitional home, better known as a halfway house. I left in 2010 when the least I need was lunch, which brings to mind, I also became a father of a baby girl, which she's now 11. Herself, Herself and I is the real reason I'm striving extra hard to do good and find a career that can provide for her a fair chance that a fair chance at living a normal life. I never was given that opportunity her age to live. I come across this program sitting in the office of the halfway house director, Tisha McAfee. She had just received an email and we were on the subject of employment. She asked me would I be interested in electrical vehicle maintenance? If so, I had to write a 250 word essay. So I did it and had the employment specialist, Jaylene Robles, double check it. The rest is history. Now put yourself in my shoes. I never attended an hour high school, had no prior experience with a laptop or iPads, and nevertheless a computer. Using my childhood upbringing, I continue to dig deep every day to find a motivation of bettering my education towards the career path in this tech savvy world in general. In the past several years, I came across the dude who murdered my little brother while in prison, which made me make a decision to think before I act. So my pops would not lose two sons to the streets and system in this vicious cycle. But every day I woke up seeing myself in this green economy, helping lower carbon emissions and reducing pollution with the skills I've learned these past five weeks of technical boot camp, ready to be instructed by my favorite professor, Mr. Sam Medini, which I highly respect and enjoy every hour spent with him hearing me yell out, Babushka, thank you. This is my story. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kenneth Gonzalez. Um, I learned about the program as a blessing from uh, Yvette Ellis. Uh, I was just so surprised, honestly. She asked me if I want to learn about electric vehicle. I was automotive for 10 years, and it was just a mythical, you know, a mythical being out in the world. And, and I'm so happy now. I, I feel like I comprehend everything about it, and I just feel so emp empowered by what we've learned here. Um, so I'm a father to an uh, eight-year-old son, and I come from retail. I used to be a store manager working 65 to 80 hours a week, uh, and I never got to see my family. And then, you know, kids, they, they bring it up, and 
I had to miss, you know, his baseball games and, and I didn't see his graduation because someone will call out and, and really at the end of the day, I, you know, in blood, I was his father, but I, I just, I really wasn't, you know, I didn't give him and uh, I grew up without a father. So to me, that was, you know, I was really disappointed in myself. So I had been blessed with a job teaching OSHA compliancy. Um, you know, I took a pay cut and it was a big risk for me and my family. And then COVID-19 happened a month later. And so I had, you know, no one to take care of my son because of COVID and they closed the schools. And so I, at that point, became a full-time father. Um, <laughs> sorry, from there, so much happened. I, I, they said, make it short. So <laughs> what, what ended up happening is I was blessed to uh, apply for Charger Help. And I ended up being one of the people who had worked at Charger Help. And this just turned around my whole life because uh, unemployment, they were talking about ending it. Um, you know, it's not enough to make a savings. And at that point, uh, OSHA compliance and those that teaching, it's going to take years for them to get their customer base back. And I didn't know what I was going to do. So thanks to the Lacey and Yvette and, and Clyde, who I see him right here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just want to thank everybody. You guys have changed my life and, and, uh, and you've given me the strength to be able to take this program as far as I possibly could. Through this program, what excites me the most about zero emissions transportation is uh, the engineering aspect. I, I went all out with, I, I, I couldn't sleep sometimes because I was like, well, how does the power get here? And how does the motor go there? And, <laughs> and, and I just wanted to know everything. It was like a hunger, a hunger that I, I haven't felt since you decided to do your first job as a kid. And, um, since then, I've uh, I built a fully operational 40 mile range electric bike just from what I've learned here, um, which I'll get a chance to show you later. I'm actually working on a 100 mile range mid mid drive bike that I'm really excited about. Um, and uh, and I had a moment where I'm like, there's this is valuable. So wh where I want to be in the transportation sector is try and find a way to make bicycles and cars affordable you know when ford first started he became successful because the car was affordable and now the average car being 30 to fifty thousand dollars it it's affordable by by getting into debt and i don't think that's right so in transportation i i want to help push electric vehicles by developing being something that that anyone at any stage of their life could afford rather than somebody who has to take the bus every day they, they can actually have their own car but uh but thank you guys for listening to my story <laughs> good afternoon everyone my name is michael washington i am a native of los angeles california I learned about this program from a good friend of mine and mentor, Duro, Pastor Duro Street, professor at USC. Previous to this program, I had no experience with electric vehicle maintenance. First and foremost, I would like to thank Lacey, um, Daniel, Sharon, Yvette, for their continued support throughout this five weeks, especially Mr. Sam Madani. He is, this, this guy has tremendous patience. He explains electricity like so simple. He, he's, he's, this guy is wonderful. Um, if, I fail, if I fail to mention anyone, please forgive me, I apologize. Uh, okay, I enjoy, meeting, I enjoy meeting this group of classmates that were willing to help each other grow and to be successful in this program. I truly enjoy learning more about electric vehicle and how to maintain how important it is to eliminate combustible engines. It is one of the main causes of climate change and the contribution to pollution in the air. Being able to understand that we have the technology available to us that we 
have the opportunity to reverse the effects of previously caused, that I have the opportunity to be a part of this growing technology. It's very exciting. I look forward to working with a company that will allow me to, excuse me, that will allow, that will allow me and give me the, the opportunity to learn and to, and to practice, excuse me, to learn more about, to learn more, to help save the environment for the next generation. Oh, um, have a career that will grow in the years to come. Um, this is a journey that I'm about to take. It's exciting. Uh, it's very important. It is one of the most important issues that we're going to face in our lifetime. It's about preserving the air that we breathe. That is huge. That is huge. Uh, I'm excited. I'm ready to get to work. Thank you. I want to thank our APC fellows for sharing their story, their testimonials. I am extremely moved um, and also motivated and inspired by their stories and uh, what's in store for them for the future. Um, and so this is just the beginning. Um, and now uh, we want to be able to bring up to the stage uh, the individual that you've heard about ever since this uh, demo day started, and that's uh, no one other than our instructor extraordinaire, Mr. Simadini, that's going to give an overview of the program. Hello, everyone. Uh, I feel a little bit funny uh, between two sides. So maybe you guys get my bad half and you guys get my better half since you guys are present. <laughs> anyway, um, I just wanted to congratulate the class. Uh, I, I just wanted to congratulate the class uh, for the, having made the, the class fun every day. You know, we all together develop that kind of thing in the classroom environment, in the lab environment, the same thing. Uh, one thing that I want to mention, uh, very important, is that it is, uh, you know, empowered or empowering uh, the young people that in our generation to actually tap into their potential uh, in a way in which it captivates them, in a way in which it uh, it makes them spring out with their, all their potential that they have. And uh, we have a lot of that happen in this in these five weeks. Amazing stuff that I want you guys to see. Um, so. Uh, with uh, any further ado, uh, we're going to have our first team. So uh, can you guys come? And, and they're going to have a presentation into uh, storage for high voltage. Oh, this, you guys have the... oh, um, uh, each team, there was three teams uh, that we were working with uh, at the college. And um, they are the final four. So they chose their name uh, for competitions and everything else. So here they go. You guys want to uh, hold up? OK. Please. Hello, everyone. Uh, as you see, my group here is called the final four. And my name is Joshua Jeffers. I'm Tyler Hoskins. Maurice Gaither. I'm Michael Mejia. And today, we're going to be presenting to you guys a high voltage battery. We're going to go over a little bit about what the high voltage battery is. Uh, the proper equipment to wear, and how there's a similar situation in your household that resembles a high voltage battery. And we're going to kick it off with Michael Mejia himself. Right. So today we're going to present to you a high voltage battery package that we got here that powers the vehicle. And uh, yes, these battery packages contain battery cells and modules organized in series and parallel forms. So just how a TV control device or an Xbox system control uses batteries to power the device, Electric cars use nickel metal hydride modules, and each of these contains six 1.2 volt cells. I'm gonna pass it to Tyler right here. So as he mentioned previously, each module contains six 1.2 module cells. Um, a closer look at it, if I take this Xbox controller right, I pop it open, what is inside the Xbox controller is gonna be batteries, right? Think of this as your module. There's 28 modules, in a high voltage battery. And each of those modules, like you mentioned earlier, will have individual cells. In this Xbox controller, there's two batteries. So consider that like a mini module 
um, you plug it in, it works, you know, uh, gives you the power that you need. And when you look at the battery, there's also other things that go on that play into that uh, come into play, such as there's these rubber tubes that go along down the battery. These let gas escape from the batteries in case there's uh, overheating or uh, any kind of dangerous situation that may come up with the battery. There's also uh, wires attached to this battery as well. And these are gonna be what reads the temperature that you're going to see in the car. That's very important because should these batteries decide to overheat, that's gonna be another issue that you're gonna come across. Okay, and then. And before we get started with the high voltage battery, uh, OSHA standard is anything above 50 volts is considered high voltage. 144 can be very fatal. So we want to be, make sure that everyone's safe and protected. So we're going to go over what the PPE was stands for personal protective equipment and also what instruments we're going to use to conduct tests with a high voltage battery. Now, Maurice Gaither here is going to show you, demonstrate to you how you're going to put on the PPE. And while Taylor going to have to give you a description of what he's doing. There you go. So as you can see, Maurice is putting on the proper PPE or personal protection equipment. The first thing you do is you roll it up. You make sure that there's no holes in the gloves in case uh, voltage can leak through and can harm you. Then when you put on the rubber glove, you're gonna put on a leather glove on top of the rubber glove. This is to protect the rubber glove from any kind of you know, roughness or damage that can occur. Because again, if you get a hole in the glove, that could be game over for you. Um, next, you're going to get your equipment that's going to be used to read the battery. This is called a fluke meter. Now, when you look at this meter, it's very important that you look at the category of your meter. Because if you get the wrong meter and the wrong category, you can blow the fuse, worse, damage the equipment, or put yourself in harm. Um, this meter specifically goes category three to 1,000 volts. That's very important. Uh, then it goes category four to 600 volts, OK? And then now Maurice is going to begin testing the battery. And then I'm going to pass it off to Jack. So now that we got the personal protective equipment on and we introduce you to the instrument that we're gonna be using, we're gonna go ahead and, and check the voltages of each module. After we check the voltage of each module, we're gonna add them up. So there's 28 modules and we're gonna add them all up. And once we get that number, it's gonna be 190 volts. Now, again, that's way above the 144, which is fatal and way above OSHA standard, which is 50 volts, which is considered high voltage. Once we get that, we're gonna divide the 190 by the 28 modules and that's gonna give us roughly around 6.7. Now, if any module for this specific battery is 0.30 above or below, we're gonna need, need to do something with that module, which calls conditioning. And what conditioning is, is essentially regulating all the modules to make sure that they match and add up correctly. If you have one module that's off, that module needs to be taken out and needs to be conditioned so that it can, again, match the rest of the batteries. Uh, if it's, point, if it's point 0.30 above, you're going to introduce that module to a load. This load is going to drain that battery so it can come down to the level of the rest of the modules. If it's 0.30 below, at that point, we're gonna to have to charge that module so that that module can be on the same level going upwards to all the other battery or all the other modules. And again, these 28 modules are what makes your battery. So if one module is off, then that can affect the rest of the battery and can cause damage later on down the line. And the future of batteries, you asked, is going to be? So uh, what's in the future for batteries? Well, there are lithium batteries that are being researched and developed to help pave the way toward a new renewable energy for the future. And uh, right now, Tesla is in the talks about an impressive new battery cell that is going to be Tesla's new million mile, million mile battery that uses lithium ion. So these batteries are being researched for safety to overcome any issues and have clean energy used in electric cars. And that is our presentation. Thank you. Uh, what an excellent uh, presentation. Uh, I commend you final four, which turned out to be five people. Um, but uh, one of the things that uh, we have to, one of the things that we have to uh, obviously uh, have the students uh, learn and be careful with this high voltage, as you guys could, so, could see and hear them talking about those kind of things. I brought with me, uh, and I had it ready here, because anytime anybody gets in close proximity to high voltage, 
you need to be ready to rescue that person, uh, whatever happened. This is one of the tools that I wanted to show you guys. It's called a shepherd's hook. It's a high voltage uh, 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 hook to safely remove someone that's doing that. So great job, guys. That's that's awesome. Next, uh, we have, uh, I think, uh, Ken is you guys or who who's next? Uh, who wants to do it? Okay. So coming up, these are the master techs. Is that correct? So here, here they are. And I think you guys are gonna need one of the uh, presentations, yeah. right? Okay. So the team is going to come in right now and uh, it's made out of uh, Kenneth Gonzalez, Brian, Ulysses, and Julio as well. Amazing students, uh, they have done so much. And like I said, it's amazing when you expose these kids to uh, this kind of technologies and it actually makes sense to them. You have to do it in such a way that it does make sense. They get it right away. They just jump over and explode like a bomb. And it's, it's so cool to see. So uh, right now, Ken is going to bring his uh, um, electric vehicle, which actually he built from scratch. Uh, he's probably going to put it on front of there, and uh, maybe uh, Ken can give us a description. Uh, can get? Can you get this? Can you help me get this? I got too many things on my hands. Uh, just get it off of there. Just squeeze it. There you go. And. Uh, and he'll give you a brief description on this wonderful little toy that he's done. By the way, this is only his first uh, uh, come up, and he did this in the first two weeks right away. He didn't want to wait. He was just, you know, all excited about this. And uh, come after the 4th of July, voila, he's riding EV all together. He sends us, send us a video with the sun where he was all excited about that too. So uh, this is it, and I'll, I'll take him away. Thanks guys. Um, well, we're actually gonna get into the bike a little bit into the presentation. So what I was thinking is we can go into the presentation and then we'll get at it when we start talking about motors. The first person is gonna be starting is gonna be Ulysses though. Let me pass him over. Hello and thank you this afternoon for being here with us. Our PowerPoint will be on electrifying the transportation sector. I'm Ulysses Cayetano. Next slide, please. So in 1963, the United States enacted the Clean Air Act, which provided framework on safe environmental practice and, and has been continuously updated and amending. One amendment, Title 11, Clean Air Act Employment Transition Assistant, amends the Job Training Partnership Act to authorize the Secretary of Labor to, make, to grant to the states, substates, grantees, and employees. The Clean Air Act influenced Jerome Morris to create the, um, the very first electrical vehicle. Um, as um, 58 years have passed since the establishment of the Clean Air Act, and progress has been slow because of the foreign and domestic wars, pandemics, and back-to-back -back recessions. Senate Bill 551, California Zero Emission Vehicle Authority, emphasized on innovation, creating a set of funding, funding and financial tools to support the transition and economic development. Thanks to Los Angeles, Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubation, a nonprofit organization that has been able to provide us with these tools. Thank you. Next will be Brian. Hi, my name is Brian. I'm here to talk about a little bit about the um, electrical transportation sector. You know, a couple of years ago, when I first noticed about these bird bikes and stuff, uh, I was kind of excited. It was a new thing. And, you know, it's an amazing thing because I'm able to travel a good distance in a short amount of time while using any cars or, you know, any gasoline fuel, you know, unnecessary, you know, economic costs for, you know, gas and, you know, helping the environment. And it's amazing what um, Los Angeles Clean Tech is doing that they're helping startups, you know, improve the competition, you know, against the big tech companies too, and improving innovation. Next slide, please. And the reason why because electricity is the future, you know, press it one more time. Yeah. Uh, electricity is the future compared to gasoline. You know, gasoline just wastes too much energy. I see, you know, the diagram to sum it up, you know, only 12 or 30% of energy 
from fuel fossil fuel is used to drive the car and all the energy is lost you know as we know it as smog and smog goes to the environment and it's just energy wasted to damage you know our health and the environment compared to elect electricity electricity is just used at best if you use it efficiently 77 percent electricity goes to the car and that can power from the vehicle itself to all its accessories so it's a you know it's a future and i still want to pass it to ken to explain more about the the mechanics behind ev yeah um, one thing, one thing that I want to mention, you know, among uh, uh, providing support for all these kids for their dreams and everything that may entice them in order to jump ahead with this technology, uh, it's plenty. So not only uh, Ken, but Ulysses too, they're working on projects that are completely amazing. And, and Ken is going to show you one right now that he just surprised me today, that he wants to donate to the college. So I told him, yes, absolutely. So. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. The next slide, please. I think there's a big, there's a big change with the jump from petrol. I, I've been working on cars for about 10 years now. And the big issue was I thought it was complicated. And honestly, it's not because right here, I'm actually holding a motor right here in my hand. Yes, it's a small motor. Yes, it couldn't drive a car. But really is if you put enough of this into one of those, then now you're driving a vehicle. So basically, as you can see in the picture, an electric motor, to give it power, basically you need coils, magnets, an inverter to invert the electricity, and a controller, and a battery. So let me go close to the camera so you guys can see. So what I did was I wired a battery onto here so that you could see how to get this to go. It, right now, it needs energy to drive. So if I have the power off, you get nothing. Now, what I feel here is actually a magnetic force from the magnet here. To get the motor to run, what it is, is it's a series of pushing and pulling. We use electricity, we invert the electricity so that we can tell the, the magnet what to push and what to pull. So as I give it electricity, this will be able to handle the inversion from the coils to the magnets to cause it to spin. All it needs is a little help starting. Oh. One second, what did I do here? There we go. It looks like they may have uh, used up the battery I showed everybody prior to this, but <laughs> as you can see, that's really all that it takes to get a motor to, to work. You can go to the next slide. Now there's one big thing that you can't do with petrol vehicles that you can do with electric vehicles. And that is we can change the range. So one battery equals 39, miles on this bike right here but if i were to double the range i don't get double i get about 77 miles because what that does is it adds uh, a lot of friction to the system mainly the weight a lot more wiring you need to add uh, more things to keep it going and especially safely so what i did for anybody who's a uh, more of a, a math into math like me i added everything that i uh, had learned in the class to calculate the amount of distance i'd be able to get if i were to add a second battery onto the system but uh, let's go to the next slide. I think this is the end. If anybody want to look up some of the references that we had talked about, um, you can see them there in the, in the references screen. So that would be the end of our presentation. Would you... He's got some pictures. So, um... Here, let me introduce that. Um, so as you guys can see, uh, there's uh, plenty of material to to do this and all we have to do again is entice them to do so uh, right now uh, mr ulysses is looking up for some uh, pictures that he wants to share of his own project that he's doing at home uh, he's uh, just like ken has been using uh, his knowledge to build stuff and go wherever he wants to go right the 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 freedom to do whatever it is you can do it anytime you want or wherever and you know just like i said to them in class um, we have the technology to actually uh, do not burn anything to get energy, and the time is now. 
because we can they afford to wait any longer. So we just need to educate the public as to why this thing is much better than the other stuff. And through these cohorts uh, like LCI, through our CT institution here, and through so many things, bring that notion to the people and they will actually agree with you once they know and once they see this stuff. We just have to uh, talk and expose them more to everyone. You guys got, uh, uh, okay, here we go. So uh, Ulysses. So I have been talking to my peers in my class and um, once we were at my house, we just started contemplating on how to actually apply this into real, um, real world daily lives. And something I like to do is I like to scavenge things that people already thrown. So to reuse whatever people don't use, recycle. And one of the, right here in this image, I actually found a stationary bicycle, which I took off the wheel and I attached the, the belt directly to an alternator, which is the same concept that that Ken was showing you with the little mechanics of, a, of the generating and the battery, but this is a larger scale. And this is something that I was uh, trying to get myself going or have my guts of myself going. And through trial and error, I'm learning how to uh, make generate more energy. Uh, thank you. Thank you, AC, DC team. Uh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, all of you, for a wonderful presentation. Your projects and everything speaks tons for yourselves. Uh, each one, I really believe that whenever we build something from scratch ourselves, uh, there's a part of you that goes to itself, right? I mean, we can go online and buy all this stuff right off the shelf, already built, but there's no honor. There's no fun on it, right? You have to blow up things and you have to get, uh, you know, kind of hot and you have to hurt yourself and things like this that make you actually pay for that, right? Uh, so great presentation, guys. I uh, really like the PowerPoint too. Uh, now we have our last team. I think uh, it's the Master Techs, is that correct? Come on up. They're going to use the, uh, they're going to use the Oh. Oops. Okay. Well, here, why don't you guys uh, go ahead and introduce yourself? My name is, my name is Michael, I'm Master Tech. Hello, my name is Jonathan Cervantes and I'm part of the Master Tech's crew. Hello, my name is Brandon Salinas and I'm also part of the crew. Good afternoon, my name is Ricardo Rodriguez and I'm also part of the Master Techs. Okay, so today we will be covering the subject of electrical energy manipulation, which is uh, seen throughout the vehicle. So we have our main components, which is a high voltage battery and that directly drives the motor through inverters. Uh, the motor is AC meaning alternative current. So the batteries are direct current. Therefore, we need inverters to convert the energy from DC to AC to provide the proper potential for the three-phase motor. Um, after that, uh, we have our 12 volt auxiliary, auxiliary battery, which uh, runs your uh, components inside your electronic components. So the high voltage is mainly to power the motor, electric motor. And uh, I will be demonstrating here a small demonstration uh, of inversion. So what's found inside your uh, electric vehicles. Because if the motor were to uh, function directly off the battery, it would use so much voltage at one point, at one time, that it, it, it can pretty much heat up the battery and cause it to fail and explode. So therefore you need a series of transformers or inverters, which uh, have an input of a certain voltage, and then you can either step it down or step it up for the output from your primary to your secondary coil. Now, I will give a demonstration here where I have my source, which is 120 volts. So I'm using live voltage from the from the wall. Now, this this is representing my control here which are uh, in terms of the SMRs or the system main relays in a vehicle. The, the, the system main relays are now open. When they're closed, that means they'll make contact and will uh, pass electrical potential through the transformer, which will come in through the primary coil as 120 volts. And I will be inverting it down to 12 volts. 
So this is what's found in your electric vehicles for, uh, so this is representing my 12 volt auxiliary battery, you know, something that can power my electronic components inside the vehicle. And this side, the 120 is representing, speak up. The, the 120 side is representing the high voltage battery source. So now I will activate the, the SMRs. And now you can see the load over here uh, being turned on. And if I uh, can show you a reading, electrical reading, Well, it, I wish you guys can see the voltmeter, but yes. I if I take the reading here, this will give me 120. As you can see there, 120, 119 volts. Now on this side, it'll be 12. Step down from 120. And then you can actually tap into the middle of the transformer and get half the voltage, which is six. So this can actually power two different systems, a 12 volt system and a uh, six volt system for your, uh, you know, internal uh, components for your electronics and accessories. And uh, I have the controller here in my hand. So can you guys see it? So I activate it, deactivate it, and you can see the load uh, yeah. running through. On and off. Yeah, so Control. that's that's the basic uh, concept of energy manipulation through inductance and uh, inverters, which I had put here together. And I will uh, pass this on to uh, Michael. I'm Michael again. Okay. Um, it's very important that you understand what the inverter does. Uh, it's, a ve it's, it's a very important component um, when it comes to your electric vehicle. The inverter is uh, steps down, converts DC power to 12 volt capacity so that it will operate your vehicle. Uh, when I say step down safely, excuse me, let me just go by what I wrote, huh? How about that? Okay, the inverter is the governor of the car, which tells the power where to go and how to use the power safely. The inverter distributes the power to all of its components safely. Key word, safely. An electric vehicle, such as the windows, excuse me, horn, um, electricity, seat, electric seats, the inverter allows the function to happen by converting the high voltage battery from DC current to 380 to 200 voltage capacity by alternating electric currents. I hope I may, I hope you understand that. Uh, we, we tried to simplify this as much as possible. If you don't understand, just hang on. It's going to get better. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm, be, I'm, be, uh, I'm going to be going over uh, Ohm's law and the physics behind it. And uh, so Ohm's law isn't necessarily used by EV technicians because we have a multimeter. However, uh, it's still a really good concept to understand because when you understand this concept, uh, if the multimeter wasn't around and like you needed to like uh, measure uh, voltage, amperage or resistance, you could do so by using the method, uh, this uh, formula, which is voltage or voltage over uh, intensity times uh, resistance. And that, that gives you your, your resistance, your voltage and your amperage. So. So knowing that formula is really important. And um, also uh, for power, uh, so power is watts. And for this example, I, I, right there in the, in the presentation, I have 144 watts. And so for you to get that watts, you need to multiply 12 volts times 12 amps, and that gives you your power. And if you were to increase the power, by uh by 12 again it would be 24 volts and then you'll be using six amps and if you did it again it would be 144 volts and one amp and this is really important because this this actually determines the size of the the conductors and the the conductors uh could actually uh so what so what it does it makes like the electricity flow through it and because of that you could be saving money by using higher voltage because that in return uh 
creates like uh, smaller conductors and overall you would be saving a lot more money. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. That's the end, thank you. Uh, yes, let's give him a round of applause. Uh, leave this here right now. Um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, uh, a little talk a little bit more about what they're doing. Uh, you know, Ulysses and uh, also Jonathan totally surprised me as well as everybody else with the stuff that they decided to bring in and present. Amazing stuff. I mean, things that I would have never uh, actually uh, uh, thought of. Or, or, you know, worse off, given an assignment to build something like this, right? I just left it out there to whatever they wanted to do. And look what they've done. This is amazing. I mean, this is exactly what happens in these vehicles. Uh, you know, he's got a power inverter as well as a DC to DC converter. Amazing, just, just from whatever it is. He's got total understanding of this. He is comfortable with high voltage, with EV, with your latest technology, Tesla, or have whatever car it is. They all work the same, by the way. They all work the same. So don't get fooled by all those things, right? Anyway, um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, say a couple of things uh, because, uh, you know, the kind words that I have listened to and everything uh, constantly, that's really my pay. That, that is my pay. I mean, I do get paid, don't get me wrong. I do get paid. But uh, that other kind of pay, there's not enough money in this world to get you that. That you have to earn. And you have to earn how? By helping each other by enticing people to understand things. And with understandings, there is so much potential there. And thank you all ACI for bringing this uh, cohort together and help participate in creating this amazing, amazing stuff. So with that, uh, anybody else wants to present or talk about anything else? Sorry? Okay, okay. And nobody else? There you go, okay. That we're gonna turn it over to LACI. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mr. Semadini. And thank you to all of our presenters. Can I get another round of applause for Team Final Four, Team ACDC, and Team Master Tech? That was extraordinary. Like you all blew us away. I don't know. I don't know if you can all see the chat, but there's tons of live chat in the um chatter in the chat. Just all of us are super in awe of each of you. You've seriously gone above and beyond like what we could have ever imagined for a demo day. Um, and just echoing like, and this is like uh, Mr. Semadini and also a reflection of Mr. Semadini, like how much you've inspired um, our students. Thank you, thank you so much for, for your incredible leadership and, and everything you've taught our fellows. And for all of our fellows, you know, I mean, as Ferg had mentioned, this is just the beginning and we are super, super excited for, for all you will continue to achieve. Um, and thank you for hitting it out of the park. So um, I have the pleasure of um, taking us to our next segment, um, none of our workforce development programs would be possible um, without the support of our generous funders. Um, for this afternoon, we want to especially recognize Electrify America, who is supporting both of our APC fellowship programs this year. Um, I am delighted uh, to introduce Misty Jappa, Manager, um, Corporate Social Responsibility and Diversity and Inclusion at Electrify America. Misty. Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right, great. Hello, APC cohort five fellows and to the broader LA clean tech incubator team. Thank you all for letting me join in today's celebration. It, it was super amazing to hear you guys talk about your testimonies and what you've done with this program. Again, my name is Misty Joppa and I oversee corporate social responsibility and diversity and inclusion at Electrify America. For those of you, of you who may not know us, we're the largest open ultra fast charging network in the US for electric vehicles, with a huge focus on educating people about the benefits of driving electric and how it is and how easy it is to charge these cars and trucks. As part of a, the education and outreach focus, we are a proud sponsor to the great work that's being done by Lacey to help build the workforce of tomorrow today. So like Lacey, we also believe in supporting and building an inclusive green force workforce and the work you all have done throughout your time in this program shows all of you have have what it takes to support this workforce that is helping to become a more sustainable future. So as I was listening to you guys, I kind of had to rewrite my speech. So I'm kind of going off the cuff here because you really did touch my soul. So 
I want you guys to know that it is really extraordinary to see all the hard work over the past weeks with the EV maintenance boot camp pay off. And we're looking forward to hearing what you've learned throughout your experiences and how that might guide you in your future opportunities. It's my hope that our industry and others like this will be able to utilize your great minds and technical training to help fuel our industry's growth today and in the years to come. You are all very much needed in this space, and I hope you guys can feel that from today. The electric vehicle and services industry is growing rapidly. Automakers are committing to going all electric, and those promises can't happen without a massive network of public, workplace, and home chargers to support these electric vehicles. But you know what? It can't happen without you too. And we know that you're going to be a huge part in the future. We need skilled jobs to power this growth and it starts with the necessary kind of training that is happening here today. So I wanna leave you guys with this and girls, if there's some girls there, wanna be inclusive in my language. <laughs> Throughout life, we all have moments of quiet triumph and dark days that may shake our faith. Do not allow false logic to limit your expectations of success. The one thing I tell my daughter is education is the one thing that no one can take away from you. Your opportunity is limitless with hard work and, and how hard you train. So remember your why in this program, right? And know that you're all investing in building a more sustainable future, not only for you and your families, but for our planet. And that's amazing. So congratulations on behalf of Electrify America. And thank you for helping build the green workforce of tomorrow and help change the future of e-mobility that will benefit us all. Um, if I can be of support to anyone in this program, please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn, Misty Jaffa, and I would love to help support your journey. Thank you so much, Estelle, for having me. Thank you, Lacey students. I'm so proud of you. We're so proud of you. Thank you so much, Misty. We really appreciate your support and those kind words. We are definitely encouraged today. Um, and like you said, education is key, and this is just the beginning of their education pursuits. And I was once told that your mind is like a parachute. It's best used when it's open. So I want to extend my gratitude to all the APC fellows for having an open mind and really meeting the challenge of learning six months of material, six months of material in five weeks. And as you can see, they absorbed all the information. So Misty, thank you so much for your support. And as we come to a close of our program, um, we want to do the most important part, and that's present our APC fellows with their technical boot camp completion certificates. And then we'll have final remarks from our APC fellowship career coach, Yvette Ellis. But I wanna say a special thank you to Sharon Sagato, who's our workforce development manager, who puts all the pieces together. I always say this publicly and everybody laughs. Um, if it wasn't for Sharon, this wouldn't be a program, it would be a beautiful mess, but because of Sharon, she puts it all together and makes it into a beautiful symphony. So I wanna introduce Sharon Sagato who will provide certificates to our fellows. Alrighty, hi everyone. So as Frigid mentioned, I am the Workforce Development Manager over at Lacey, and I was fortunate and blessed enough to get to know all 13 of these amazing fellows, and I have the honor of presenting them with these certificates. So just to read it out loud to you guys, uh, this is your Certificate of Achievement that you have completed the Advanced Prototyping Center Fellowships Technical Bootcamp in EV Maintenance Training. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call you guys up one by one and have you guys receive your certificate. And then feel free to have a seat and we'll have Yvette close us out with closing remarks. So first, can I please have uh, Brandon Salinas. Okay. <laughs> Don't want to lose that. Uh, next, I'd like to have, oh, Ryan Hernandez. All right, perfect. All righty, can I please have Jonathan Cervantes? Yeah, of course, congratulations. Yeah, of course, thank you. Joshua Jeffers? Joshua, Joshua. <laughs> Joshua. 
Josue Morales. There you go. So congratulations. Yeah. Julio Fonseca. Julio, congratulations. You're welcome. All righty. Ken Gonzalez. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, of course, you're welcome. Maurice Gaither. There you go. Thank you. Congratulations. Michael Meha. Mike. Big Mike. Congratulations, sir. Mr. Michael Washington. Congratulations. <laughs> Ricardo Rodriguez. <laughs> Congratulations, Ricardo. Yeah, of course. Tyler Hoskins. I've got two for two right now. Look at you. Congratulations. <laughs> All righty. And last but not least, Ulysses Cayetano. <laughs> awesome. All righty. Congratulations again, guys. It's been an amazing five weeks. Uh, but your journey doesn't end here. We'll always be in touch and we're excited to get to know you guys even further. And we know you're going to kill it in the green workforce. So I'd like to hand it off to Miss Yvette Ellis with some closing remarks. Oh, wait, I'm going to clip it. Good afternoon and congratulations. I'm going to talk to them, but I'm talking to you. OK, so first of all, we want to say super congratulations to all of the APC fellows who completed during this. We all know a uh, very interesting time in history and to be able to complete something wholeheartedly and do it well with flying colors is not uh, normal nowadays. So the fact that you all did this is a huge, huge deal. Um, I am. Yvette Ellis, I'm their career coach, and I got to hear some of the nitty gritty about some of the challenges that they were having, some areas of improvement, right? And they have improved a great deal. Um, so I'm looking forward to employers that and partners who want to hear more from them. They have their elevator pitch, so they won't even keep you a long time. They'll be able to give it to you quick, right? We write great emails. We're ready for this workforce. We have certification. So you just let me know what you need. And there's a group of folks here ready, right? Woo! <laughs> I also am co-founder, chief workforce officer for Charter Help. So uh, I love doing this. And I love sharing that Charter Help's first uh, hires when we got started were fellows from the APC uh, fellowship so we don't take it lightly uh we take you all the way our techs start off at 30 dollars an hour um so we're really really excited to see who apc has now and in the future and i get to train them so we know we'll be getting exactly <laughs> what we want um and we also are extremely proud of every single one of you and Career coaching, so everyone understands career coaching does not stop here. They get months of career coaching as they move into different areas, as they um, meet different challenges. We do mock interviews, resumes. But one thing that I often share with the fellows on a regular basis, and I kind of like to really, really get it in their heads that they are the prize, right? Because we can get in the job market and feel like, oh, I, I'll be happy or so lucky if a company picks me, but really marketing yourself is really learning that you're the prize, that you got this. I'm certified, right? You have the most up-to-date knowledge as of today, right? And you have to kind of 
you have to take that attitude on and you have to approach the workforce with confidence. So that's what we'll be working on, not just the certification, the technical skills, which I'm so excited that they have from uh, this program, but also those soft skills and that interpersonal uh, <laughs> skill set that we all know is very necessary in the workplace, especially as we maneuver and navigate these new times of uh, virtual remote work. We don't know what this will look like, but we're excited about all the EV infrastructure and we definitely know that there is a need for these technicians. So we're very, very excited. So with that, oh, last, I want to really thank Erica. Where is Erica? Yay! I wanted to take a minute to thank Erica. She's with the um, LA Trade Tech uh, team here. She just really made it possible for this program to work on both ends. So we want to shout you out and say thank you very much. And with that being said, I will hand it over to Fer. Let me pull out my, <laughs> got it. Thank you so much, Yvette. And thank you all in the virtual world for attending. Thank you all in the in-person world for attending. Family and friends, we really appreciate it. Um, this is just the beginning. And we're so proud of our APC fellows for everyone coming together. This is what I deem a megatron of a program where LATTC and Transportation Workforce Institute and Lacey has all come together to provide this EV maintenance training program. Be encouraged, be inspired. And remember, the most important thing that you can do is really give credence and give attention to ships, mentorship, apprenticeships, and relationships, and the sky's the limit. So with that being said, congratulations. So thank you, everyone. Have a great day. And thanks for attending our APC Fellowship Technical Boot Camp Demo Day. Take care. <laughs>